you hear what I hear? Somebody say, do you hear? Come on, what I hear. Let's say that again. Do you hear what I hear? See, the thing is, is that when the word of the Lord goes forth, it will speak to you where you are. So don't get discouraged when others don't hear what you hear. As long as you know that it's a word from the Lord. Hello, somebody? So let's say that again. Do you hear what I hear? If you don't, it's okay. Because you need to get the word for yourself. But see, that's how the Holy Ghost is so great and so awesome. He will give one word. And it will speak to you where you are. Isn't the Holy Ghost great? He will teach you. He will direct you. Hallelujah. When you hear the word of God, the word of God is not only for hearing. Because the Bible will tell us to not just be hearers, but to be what? Doers. Come on, of the word of God tells us that in Romans chapter 2 I'm not going there verse 13 just to give you a reference scripture but it tells us not to just be hearers but to be doers so what does that mean that means that when we hear the word of God it should cause a reaction in your spirit come on it should cause something to stir up on the inside of you when you hear the voice of the Lord that means it's time for you to take action Somebody say, take action. take action. Come on, get a move on. Get a pep in your step. God's about to do something. He don't give you a word just for you to just sit back and do nothing. God is saying today, amen, they're hearing my word, but they're not reacting to my word. Therefore, they're coming and they don't have a spirit of celebration. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, give me a spirit of celebration. A spirit of celebration means that you're celebrating something. You're, you're celebrating an accomplishment. You're celebrating a breakthrough. You're celebrating an overcoming in your life. You're celebrating a blessing in your life. Hallelujah. God wants to bless us. God wants to bless us. Hold that. God wants to bless us. He wants to do something new in your life. Hallelujah. As I was studying this word, amen, just to piggyback off of my sister on last week and the week before, where the Lord gave us the scripture. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 let me let me find it here. I gotta get my uh, y'all. I left my glasses home. I got my bifocals today. Thank God for spare glasses. The week before, I believe the Lord gave us this scripture in First Corinthians chapter two and nine. It says here, but it is written, eyes hath not seen, nor ear heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Tell somebody that ain't for everybody. That ain't for everybody. That's for them that do you love Jesus? Come on, somebody lift your hand if you love Jesus. So when you declare and decree that you love God, tell somebody there's something greater for you. It's bigger than your idea. It's bigger than your imagination. Oh my goodness, I gotta stand still today. I ain't used to these bifocals. I'm about to step off this thing here. These are tricky. Amen. But it has not, I have not seen nor ear heard. Do you hear what I hear? 
The Bible takes us over to Mark chapter 5, which I believe Elder spoke on last week. But I want to pick up on something here. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Thank you, Lord God. And it talks about the woman with the issue of blood. It says, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered. She wasn't getting better, y'all, but rather grew worse. But listen to this scripture. When she had heard of Jesus, tell somebody, when you hear Jesus, it should cause your attitude to change. It should cause you to into action. Hallelujah. It says, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Now, I'm sure other people were standing around there. They heard that Jesus was coming too. But her hearing the word that Jesus, Jesus was on the scene caused her to go into action. And because of her action, the Bible goes on to explain that what? She was made whole because of her faith. Hallelujah. Because she heard that Jesus was passing by. The thing is, is that she heard that he was passing by. Do you understand that she didn't even ask permission? Come on, for a blessing. She took, come on somebody, tell somebody, take your possession. Come on, take your blessing. It's yours. The thing is, is that y'all, a lot of us, we're asking for things that already belong to us. If you go according to the word of God, see, the thing is that a lot of us are asking for victory when we're supposed to be fighting from a place of victory. Tell somebody, we sing the song, I got the victory. We don't sing the song, I'm asking for the victory. Hallelujah. Is that the song? Which song do you sing? Tell somebody, I sing the song, I got it. Come on, come on, tell them, I got it. I'm fighting from a place of victory. I'm fighting from a place that I've already won. We talk all the time, the battle is fixed. All we got to do is show up. But a lot of us, we ain't showing up. We already got the victory. This is why we need to pay attention to how we pray. Hello, somebody. We pray that I'm healed in Jesus' name. We pray that I am the blessed. We pray that I already have more than enough. Hallelujah. You have to pray from a place of strength. When we come in weakness, come on, y'all. I know we read the scripture where we are weak, he is strong, but come on, you got to get some Holy Ghost muscle up in you sometime. In order for you to fight. Somebody say Holy Ghost muscle. That sounds good, don't it? But when you hear about Jesus, when you hear the word, that's why it's important to be in the house. It's important to be in the house of God. People say, why do you come? Because I need to hear the word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, let's, let's go up a little bit. Uh, I'm a, let's go to 14. Uh, no, let's go to, let's go to 9. In that same chapter, Romans 10, chapter 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be. Somebody say, I'm saved. 
Do you believe that today that you're saved? What are you saved from? I'm saved from what's coming to this world. Hello, somebody? I'm saved from the mouth of hell that's going to gobble up all that is not in Christ Jesus. Hello, somebody? That's what I'm saved from. And through that salvation, I have the benefits of God. But that doesn't exclude me from some trouble. That don't exclude me from some heartache. But it gives me something to fight with. And I fight with the promises of Jesus. I fight with his promises. We are going to go through earthly battles, saints of God. And you need to hear this word to strengthen your faith. Because a lot of us, amen, we are, uh, 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 how's the word? We're comparing our earthly experiences with our salvation. The devil is a liar. I'm saved and that settles it. And it ain't nothing that the devil can do about that. Hello, somebody? If that was the case, Job would not have gone through all that he went through. Hello? He was stricken in his body. He lost loved ones. Come on. His money was down to nothing. But God restored him. But even through all of that, even through all of that, the Lord gave a command that he could not touch his soul. Tell somebody, my soul is anchored. So when you get that position in your spirit, when you get that in your mind, you know that everything else is secondary because I'm on my way to heaven no matter what. Hallelujah. It says here in verse 10, it says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You know why you won't be ashamed? Because God is a God of action. He gets it done. Tell somebody, God will get it done. Come on, in your life, God will get it done. Therefore, you won't be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the, the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord is over all, is rich unto all that call upon his name. I don't care about your background. I don't care who your mom and daddy is. Hallelujah. If you learn how to call on the name of Jesus, come on, not only in the time of trouble. Because it doesn't say nothing about just calling him in the time of trouble. This is all that will call on the name of Jesus. He will make no difference. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard. Come on, you got to hear his voice. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Hallelujah. He's talking about how beautiful are the steps. He ain't talking about just us that's up here behind this pulpit. Tell somebody you got a word in you. You got a word that somebody needs to hear. And we all have the obligation to preach the gospel. Thank you, Lord God. It says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. 
For Isaiah, which is Isaiah, saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing. Here we go again, y'all. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Tell somebody I'm ready to take action. Let's go to Matthew 20 and 30. Matthew 20 and 30. We're about to wrap this up. Thank you, Lord God. And it says here, and behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside. When they what? When they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out. Tell somebody they took action. When they heard the word. Are you ready to take action today? Is there something that you've been waiting for? Is there something that you've been believing God for? Well, today you're hearing the word. Take action. It should change your attitude and your outlook that Jesus is on the scene. They heard that Jesus passed by, cried out saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude, listen to this, y'all, and the multitude rebuked them because they didn't hear what they heard. Hello, somebody? Do you hear what I hear? I'm not going to allow anybody or anything to mess up what God wants to do in my life. Hello, somebody? I don't care if you're with the program or not. When God wants to bless you, come on, somebody, ain't nothing that the devil can do about it. Come on, somebody ought to celebrate Jesus for that. They rebuked them because they would not hold their peace. Y'all know how people are when they want you to be quiet. They want you to move on along. But you know you got a need down on the inside that nobody can feel but Jesus. Come on, somebody. Do you know what I'm talking about this morning? Amen. You got something down on the inside of you that you need fixed and worked out. Something in your home that you need a miracle of God. Come on. You know it's going to take a God moment to change that thing. And people want you to hold your peace. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. I'm going to give God praise. Come on, when you want me to and when I, when you don't want me to, I'm going to give it the effort that I need in order for my breakthrough. Hallelujah. You tell them to hold your peace. You hold your peace. Hallelujah. People don't want to act crazy no more. They say, oh, no, we can't be speaking in tongues. We can't be, you can't let the Holy Ghost, uh, what? Not up in here. Not up in here. Because I know, amen, when I need a breakthrough, I got to go in the spirit. Come on, somebody. Sometimes, thank you, Lord, ain't enough. Sometimes, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes, I got to pray in the spirit. Because sometimes, y'all, we get so messed up, we don't even know what to pray for. And the scripture backs it up. Thank you, Lord God. The scripture backs it up. We don't know what to pray for, so we let the spirit of God that gives utterance pray for us. Hallelujah. These guys here, they didn't allow nobody, amen, to keep them from their breakthrough. The Bible says here they would not hold their peace, but they cried the more. Tell somebody they got louder. Say, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still. 
ain't nothing like getting God's attention. And he called them and said, what will ye that I shall do unto you? And they said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Here they don't understand. Amen. Listen, they didn't just say, Lord, that I can see. That's not what they asked. It went, tell somebody, it went deeper than that. Because you can see and still be blind. I say you can have sight and still be blind. I love this scripture. They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. You got to see this thing. You got to see the word of God. Tell somebody, you got to learn how to see what you hear. Come on, let me say that again. You got to learn how to see what you 